Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's boot camp, The Psychology of Sales Success. I would now like to introduce Coach Phil. Phil, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm very excited about what we're going to be discussing today. Now, it's important to note that these aren't all my original ideas. These are things I've learned and accumulated through a long time, research, study, reading from the masters. So we're gonna call this accumulation today. And we're gonna give credit to a lot of the people, a lot of the sources through our recommended reading near the end. But I will tell you this, if you follow the things we're gonna outline for you today, it'll change your life and definitely change your career and your sales success. Now, who am I? I'm the number one annuity producer in the history of the insurance business. I built the fastest growing marketing firm ever in the insurance business. I was a leading life insurance producer and expert. I've trained most of the top people in the insurance industry. And without a doubt, I'm a top marketing expert for any industry. And I've done sales training for many, many industries, but I wanted to give you some of my background. Um, a lot of the great sales trainers today were great salespeople. And any time, in my opinion, you can learn from anyone that will help you. I think it's an amazing thing. But this gives you some of my background. It's all documented. And if we're ready to go, let's start. The number one issue to become an elite producer, and here's the question you have to ask yourself. Are you ready to become an elite producer? Are you ready? Nobody, elite producers aren't born. They're not born. So are you ready to become one? It's all due to your mindset. It's all due to your mindset. And one of the things that I will tell you is, and if you don't change your mindset, you will never become an elite producer. Elite producers think differently, carry themselves differently, act differently. So we talk about, people talk about the power of positive thinking. This isn't really just about positive thinking because I can train almost anyone to become an elite producer. What does it take? It takes the correct mindset. It takes great work ethic, great work ethic. It takes study and it takes determination. It takes determination. And if you can have the correct mindset, a good work ethic, if you are ready to study and learn, and if you are determined, if you have what I call relentless determination, you can become an elite producer. Now, what are the rewards for becoming an elite producer in your field? First of all, there's the satisfaction of knowing you're among the top. Second of all, you're going to enjoy your work a lot more. And of course, there's the rewards of helping your clients or prospects or customers and the financial rewards. Elite producers make elite money. So I have a saying. It's not if you can believe you can achieve. If you believe in yourself, you can achieve. So I want you to think about this for a minute. Who believes in you? Your spouse, your parents, your siblings, your children, your friends, your customers, your clients. But the most important person to believe in you is you, is you. No one can ever take this away from you, no matter what. 
If you believe in yourself, you can achieve. If we can't change your mindset so you believe in yourself, probably not going to end up being an elite producer. So this is something you should write down if you have a pen and paper and something you should live by. Now, elite producers invest in themselves. So let's talk about this. If you go to college, you can get a bachelor's degree, you can get associate's degree, a bachelor's degree. Uh, you invest in yourself through hard work, through study, through learning, through paying the tuition. Then you get a master's, you can get a doctorate. And that's investing in yourself time, effort, money. Elite producers invest in themselves. They work with great coaches. They read, and I'm gonna give you some great recommended reading at the end. They're studying and learning all the time. Studying and learning all the time. They model themselves after the best in the industry. And, and let me tell you this, Here's one thing I believe. I believe elite producers are very generous about sharing what they know and do with people who are striving to become elite producers. So if you're at an industry event or you run across somebody who's an elite producer and you tell them your situation and ask them for help, most of the time they're gonna help you and be of help and maybe even mentor you. Take advantage of that. Take advantage of the stars. Now, how do you see yourself? How do you dress? How do you lock? How do you act? How do you speak? So notice I'm wearing a polo. I live in Florida. It's very hot here. And we don't usually wear suits and ties. But when I was out selling to clients, most of the time, at least I had a shirt and tie and or suit coat that I didn't have on, but I brought with. I was watching some episodes of The Sopranos and Tony was wearing polos a lot, and you're looking at the polos and you're going, those are expensive polos. Those aren't 1995. How you dress? What kind of watch do you have on? Is, is your hair neat? And, and I'm famous, I used to have very long hair. Is your hair neat? If you have a beard, is it trimmed? How do you act? Do you have confidence? Do you carry yourself well? And how do you speak? Now, most, not all, but most professional speakers have acting coaches or voice coaches. Actors have acting coaches. Singers have voice coaches. A lot of times I will recommend that my clients get a voice coach. And they're not expensive. And they're very helpful, especially I work with people from all who come from all over the world. And a lot of times they'll have accents. Sometimes I have trouble discerning what they're saying. So I always recommend, not just if you have an accent, and there's nothing wrong with having an accent, but people have to be able to understand you if you're in sales, but also for people who are shy, who don't speak well, who, who are too loud sometimes, or too soft sometimes, who don't know how to use voice inflection, that you get a speech coach. So keep that in mind. I wanna to talk to you about relentless determination. And I'm gonna to cite to you three stories and I'm gonna tell you to be relentless about your success. Now, you probably don't know who the first guy is, Billy Walters. Hopefully you remember John Denver, the country and pop singing star. And if you don't know who Kevin Hart is, you've been living under a rock. So let's talk about these three gentlemen. I'm gonna start with Billy. So Billy Walters is a professional gambler. He's gotten some notoriety lately. Uh, he was uh, tied in with Phil Mickelson over some uh, insider trading. 
Phil Mickelson, the great golfer. Phil was not accused of doing anything illegal, but Billy was. And he went to jail. He was his sentence was commuted by the president. But before that happened, he's 75, was a professional gambler, and had a Gulfstream jet, I believe. I saw an, a, a story on him in 60 minutes before they the issue of insider trading happening happened. But I know he had a jet and made many tens of millions. So you say to me, Phil, why don't you tell me about this guy? Well, Billy started out as a car salesman. And when he was 29, he went to work at a used car lot in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's where he was from, Kentucky. Here's what he did. This is 1965. Every time he sold a car, he mailed a self-promotion letter to 10 people living on each side of that customer's home. I want you to think about that. It's genius. Then he would go through the daily newspaper. That's when they had newspapers and not the internet for car ads, inviting the ad sellers to do trades with him. Then he would go through the phone book and cold call people. He was relentless. And back then, he sold an average of 32 cars a month and he earned $56,000, which in 1966 was a lot of money, equivalent to about 400,000 a day. He set all kinds of car sales records and he ended up owning several dealerships. And it was the start of his career. He was relentless about his success. Now let's take John Denver. John Denver wrote a hit song in the 60s, not sung by him, sung by a folk group, very famous. If you haven't heard of them, I'm dating myself, Peter, Paul, and Mary. And it's called Leaving on a Jet Plane. Well, many of you don't know John Denver wrote that song. So when John Denver started out, he was touring college campuses and he'd go to a college and nobody knew who John Denver was. And he would create circular flyers about where he was performing, what time, and he'd put in it that he was the songwriter behind Leaving on a Jet Plane, which everybody in the country knew that song. And he would go around town and, and ask store owners to put the flyers in and he'd post them, you know, with staples on telephone poles. And he would have people come to his performance and he built a following. That was a lot of work. John Denver wasn't just a songwriter, a singer, a storyteller. He was a self-promotion, self-marketer. But maybe the greatest example today of a self-marketer is Kevin Hart. Now, I have to confess, my favorite comic is not Kevin Hart. It's Chris Rock, uh, who I love. But I do want to tell you this. I've seen Chris, and I've seen Kevin twice. And the first time I saw Kevin, he was doing two shows in an arena that he had sold out. Two shows the same night. 20,000, I went to the early show, 20,000 later. He sold out 40,000 seats in one night in Tampa, Florida. And let me tell you, without a doubt, best show ever for a comedian. If, if, you, ever, if you haven't seen Kevin Hart and you ever have a chance, you absolutely need to. But I think it may be fair to say that very few people work as hard or harder than Kevin Hart. So here's a story for you I read. Judd Apatow is the uh, famous director who's done all those movies. If you don't know his name, you know the movies, 40-Year-Old uh, Virgin, etc. And Judd Apatow was developing a TV series with Kevin and Jason Siegel. And if you don't know Jason Siegel is, you would know if you saw him. He was the actor on How I Met Your Mother, and he's been in a lot of movies, starred with him. You'd know him immediately, but you probably know his name. So Siegel tells the story. Apatow had him living in a very small apartment together with Hart because he wanted them to get to know each other for camaraderie for this TV series. And Jason says, we're young guys. And me and my friends were out all the time, not Kevin. 
never left in there working all the time, writing, polishing, working on his performances. If you follow Kevin Hart at all, probably nobody does work harder than him. And there's a lot of hardworking people in the entertainment industry. Uh, the Rock comes to mind, of course. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, a great success story and well-deserved. But Kevin Hart was relentless about success. And when he first went out and did shows, he would get people's emails, phone numbers, and he'd put together he was he put together lists. So when he returned to town, he'd contact all the people. Bring your friends. Kevin knew how to build referral networks. There's a lot of stories about this, about relentless success. And in order to become an elite producer, I believe you need to have relentless determination to reach your success. And I said stories about relentless success, I'm sorry, I meant relentless determination. So let's talk about someone else who's the epitome of relentless determination, Joe Girard. Now, if you're older like me, you know who he is, wrote a book called The World's Greatest Salesman, World's Greatest Auto Car Salesman. Absolutely. And if you read his book, it's in our recommended reading. He tells the story of getting a job, and I think it was Thanksgiving or it might have been Christmas Eve, one of the two, Thanksgiving Eve. And he has no money to feed his wife an infant child. No money for food. Imagine your determination so you could feed your family. Could there be anything more motivating? And he, they gave him a chance at the dealership on commission, and he didn't get ups, meaning ups are when people come in, whoever's next takes them. And he saw a guy walking around the lot, nobody would help him, and he went up and talked to him, and he sold the, that person a car that night. And I think got in advance so he could buy food. He was full of relentless determination but not for success, not so he could buy a big car, a big house, so he could buy food, so he could buy food. Now, I was talking with Eric Laughlin. Eric is a life coach and uh, not just a good one, an amazing one, an amazing coach. And Eric spent several years working with Tony Robbins, uh, and several years working with Dr. Donald Moyne, who's uh, uh, one of the masters at, at sales coaching, a sales psychologist. And we were talking about, was Joe Girard the greatest salesperson or the greatest marketer? And here's the reason. Joe never took ups. When he came into work, he had appointments. He worked the phones relentlessly. He worked his customers relentlessly. He had people coming in to see him. He didn't have to wait for somebody walking by into the dealership. Now, how many times have you and I went to a car dealership and seen the car salesman waiting, taking their turn for the next person coming in? Not Joe, never did that. Joe would go to football games and throw hundreds of business cards up in the air. I don't think you can do that today, but he did. There's no doubt, first of all, he was an amazing salesperson. He made more money than the owner than the uh, owner of the dealership, but he was also a, the master marketer. And that gets into, in order to become an elite producer, you have to keep your pipeline full. Absolutely, and Joe always did that. Great book, it's on my recommended reading list. One of the things that elite producers do is they keep it simple at all times. Many salespeople wanna show off. I'm so smart, here's how much I know. It's not about what you and I know. And I take it back to one of the great lines 
I think, in movie history with uh, my favorite actor, Denzel Washington, uh, the movie Philadelphia with Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. And interestingly enough, they have Denzel's a lawyer, Tom's on the witness stand, and Denzel says to him, explain it to me like I'm a six-year-old. And I just love that line. And I've remembered it all these years. And when I don't understand something, I say to somebody, explain it to me like I'm a six-year-old. What a great line. Whoever wrote that, God bless you. What a great line. Keep it simple. It's not about your ego. Elite producers keep it simple. Elite producers ask questions. All they do is ask questions. You know, God gave us two ears, one mouth. People love to talk about them. They don't want to hear about you. They want to hear about them. So here's an example. It's not an elite producer example, but it's a great story. From Jay Abraham. Now, Jay, also in the recommended reading list, is the marketing guru of our times. I've been reading his material for 40 years. He's a genius. Uh, I've never met him personally. I have friends who have talked to him about me. He's always been, he's been beyond kind. Uh, he's a true gentleman. But here's a story he tells. And by the way, he has his own YouTube network. And I can tell you this. Uh, I have a big screen TV, and uh, I love big screen TVs, okay? Uh, if Just love them. So I used to have Jay's YouTube network on the screen all the time. And, and, and my wife would say to me, she goes, can you, we watch something else? <laughs> Don't slide it, Jay, but <laughs> she's like, did you just buy this TV to, to watch Jay Abrams? I'm like, how lucky am I? And uh, so I recommend his YouTube network. I think it's amazing. And he's just amazing. But he tells a story. Uh, he was overseas doing, uh, I don't know if he was doing a seminar with Tony Robbins or something. And he's in a bar and I think he's drinking Hennessy. And he sees a guy sitting at the bar. And Jay's a naturally curious person. And he goes up sits down with the guy and starts talking to him. And he finds out the guy's from Germany and the guy sells birth control to countries, not to individuals, to countries for, for their people. And uh, Jay spends time with him and all Jay does is ask him questions. Where'd you go to college in Germany? How do you like living in Germany? What do you like about your job? Who have you met that's interesting? It, it's like a... Uh, a Jay Abrams interview. Jay doesn't say almost anything about himself. He's curious about this amazing person that he's just met. So when he gets ready to leave, he's walking to the elevator, and the guy stops him for a minute, and he says, wait, I have to tell you something. Jay goes, yes. He goes, I've traveled all over the world. I deal with amazing people all the time. The guy looks at him and says, you, Jay, are the most interesting person I've ever met. Now, I want you to think about that. He doesn't really know anything about Jay, except he knows he's interesting. Because Jay took an interest in him. Elite producers ask questions. It's about the customer, the client, the prospect. It's not about them. It's not about them. Elite producers script their presentations. They use scripting. Now, scripting is one of the key things, in my opinion. I'm going to give you a list of key things in a few minutes that you have to master in order to become an elite producer. Scripting is one of the most important. It's the foundation. 
it's the foundation. And I'm going to tell a couple stories here in a minute to give you an idea of even when somebody has an objection of rebuttals and scripting. So let's talk about this. Elite producers tell them what it does before they tell them what it is. So I'm going to go back now to my teen years where I was a waiter in a resort in Michigan. And I was very lucky. I grew up very poor and was very lucky to have this job. And uh, I still think about all the people who helped me then. Uh, and, and God bless them. A lot of them are gone. Um, I still talk to uh, the eldest son of the owners of the resort, gave me the job. And in this resort, we had a head waiter. His name was Al. Now was a genius. And he'd been there forever. And the people loved him. They all came back year after year. It was an expensive resort. So I was very lucky at a young age to make a lot of money for back then. And one day Al gathers the staff and he brings out a plate of food that's just gorgeous. All kinds of garnishes and uh, surrounded by, it's just amazing. Nobody had any idea what, what the main course was on it, but it was beautiful. And Al says to staff, tell me what this is to you. And a couple people look at him and one person goes, it's too pretty to eat. And Al says, bingo, it's exactly right. You want the people to know that this is too pretty to eat. So they're excited about it. What it does, it's so beautiful, it must taste amazing. And it did. Before you tell them what it is. And, and I don't actually remember what the dish was. I don't remember if it was a piece of chicken or fish or whatever. But I'll never forget that lesson. I'll never forget that lesson about telling them what it does before they tell them what it is. Now, Al was a genius at dealing with people. So I, I remember there were a couple of times we always heard the same thing. So one of the specials was always Lake Superior from the Great Lakes Whitefish, which is just an incredible fish to eat. And you would always hear the same two things. And I only remember the answer to one of them. Uh, the first one is they'd always talk to me and they go, Sonny. So you got to remember, it was a long time ago, I was Sonny to them. Uh, Sonny, is the fish fishy? Well, you know, it's fish, but you know what they meant. But the funniest one was, Sonny, does the fish have bones? Nobody likes bones in their fish. So I went to Al, I go, Al, all these people are, now I'm 16 or 17 at the time. They want to know if the fish has bones. What do I tell them? And Al looks at me, doesn't, doesn't miss a beat and says, Bill, tell them that's how the fish was held together in the lake, the bones. And I start laughing. I go, are you serious? He goes, try it and see. So the next time somebody said to me, does the fish have, Sonny, does the fish have bones? Yes, ma'am. That's how it was held together in the lake. And I'm standing with a big smile. And they start laughing. But not too many bones and it's delicious. You'll love it. And they always did. So that was an example of a scripted rebuttal to an objection. Now, realistically, we didn't care whether they had fish or chicken or steak or it, it didn't matter, but it was scripted. And I wanna give you an example from one of the greatest salesmen I've ever had the honor of meeting of scripting and being able to handle an objection. So I have a friend, George, who sells Mercedes-Benz. And George must be about my age, and he looks like he stepped out of GQ magazine. 
always immaculate dress, beautiful suits. And he's one of the top Mercedes salespeople in the world, but he doesn't need to be. Before he moved to Florida to sell Mercedes, he had a heating and air conditioning business in Michigan. He sold it. I'm sure he made a ton of money. His wife's an OBGYN doctor. I know she does incredible. And he wanted to sell Mercedes because he wanted a hobby. He loves Mercedes. And he wanted all his kids to buy Mercedes. So he becomes a Mercedes salesperson as a hobby. Now it's a full-time hobby. He's recognized all over the country as an elite producer. So I bought a few cards from George and I was driving a lot of miles, 60, 70,000 miles a year. And I had the S-Class sedan and I was on my second one. And George says to me, well, it's about time Phil, for you to trade in, do this because you can only keep them so long or we're wear, literally wearing out the great car. And I said, George, I'm not buying another Mercedes. And he says, Phil, why? He says, what are you going to buy? I said, I'm going to buy a Prius. He goes, no, you're not. I go, yes, I am. He goes, why are you going to buy a Prius? I said, George, I drive so much, I go through three sets of tires a year. So it's a big car. The tires only last about 15 or 20,000 miles. I do tons of maintenance, not repairs, maintenance. It costs me about 10,000 a year, not to mention gas, which is at that time, a hundred bucks a week. That's a joke. Now it'd be about 300. And I'm tired of it. He says, well, Phil, Prius is a good car. He goes, let me tell you a little story. He goes, you know, I drive a Mercedes, of course. He goes, I was in the Mercedes SUV and about two weeks ago, I never told you this, I'm on the interstate and a truck in front of me, one of those trucks that they have furniture and stuff loaded that's not tied down, a sofa drops off of it. And I'm going 60 miles an hour and I hit it. And it really damages the car. And I walk away okay, not hurt at all. Car needed a lot of repair because I ended up skidding into something and and he says to me, he says, so, Phil, are the roads you drive on dangerous? Well, he knows, of course, on Florida highways on both sides of the state, very dangerous. He goes, what's the most important thing to you about your car? I go, surviving an accident. He goes, exactly. He goes, let me ask you a question, Phil. Is there a safer car than the car you drive? I said, not that I know of. He says, What's the most important thing? Is it coming home safe to your family and alive? I said, well, of course. He goes, uh, when do you want to see your new Mercedes? And he was right. He was absolutely right. No argument, no nothing about a Prius not being prestigious. Because by the way, Priuses, people love them because they're green. My daughter has one. It's an amazing car. It's a great car. Nothing about saving the money, all about what it does. Yeah, it's prestigious. Yeah, it's comfortable. What it mostly does is increases your odds of getting there and back alive. So that's an example. That's what George is one of the greatest salespeople I've ever met. And, and let me tell you, every I, I bought a lot of cars from him. But I know so many people who bought cars from him, and everybody just loves the guy. I, I ran into somebody recently, and they go, uh, Bill, I know you have a Mercedes SUV. My wife has a Mercedes SUV. And uh, he goes, I just bought one. I said, from George? He goes, yeah. And he's asking me. And I said, look, he said, let me just tell you, whatever George tells you, just take it to the bank. And he got his vehicle and he loves it. He said, thank you so much. Uh, so that's an example of an elite producer. And by the way, the referrals he gets are amazing because elite producers get a ton of their business from referrals. So with this, I hope you've gotten down now. They talk, you listen. They talk, 
you listen. So let's go on to the next part. How to increase your income. Now, hopefully, I've given you the thought process of an elite producer. And I'm telling you, they're not born. Sales is both an art and a science. And you can do it. You can become an elite producer. But now we're going to talk about how to increase your income. So let's take this. And I found this. I love this example when I was doing uh, some research on poker training because I want to cite them. Uh, I play tournament poker, just the tournaments, and I enjoy it. Uh, it's casual, it's fun, costs about the same as a round of golf. And I was looking at some training material and there was a great training video and he was talking about something that immediately applied to all sales. I was so excited, it was two in the morning, I'm an insomniac, it's two in the morning, I get up, I turn on the light, I start writing this down, my wife sees the light on, comes out and goes, what are you doing? Do you ever sleep? You know, turn the light off so I can sleep, I shut the door. But here's what we do. We take our current situation, we take our goal, Got to have the goal to become an elite producer. And we look at the things necessary to achieve the goal. The speed, the distance, the time. Speed and time, pretty related. The distance. So let's take a look at this. Let's say you make $100,000 a year and elite producers in your field make a million dollars a year. And some of you go, a million dollars a year, I can never make that. I guarantee you can. I guarantee you can if you become an elite producer in your field. Now, if you're going to go from 100 to 150, it's going to be less speed, less distance, less time, because that's not as far. But if you're going from 100 to a million, it's farther. So you need to set up the time you're going to do it and how much speed you can allocate to it to get there. This is very important to think about. The bigger the goal, the longer the time. Big goals require small steps and you have to set milestones. You have to set milestones because it's so easy to overestimate what can be done in one day and to underestimate what can be done in one year should write that down. It's easy to overestimate what can be done in one day and underestimate what can be done in one year. The speed is in your control. How many hours are spent? What's your focus? Are you dedicated? Are you passionate? Do you have relentless determination? Do you have the self-discipline to do this? You have the emotional control to deal with setbacks. The speed is in your control. How much can you dedicate, focus, self-discipline, emotional control? It's about where you want to be, not where you are. Don't lie to yourself about who you are and who you aren't. So let me give you an example. I can train you to be an elite producer. But if I go out and spend 10,000 hours hitting golf balls and practicing, I'd become a much better golfer, but I'm never gonna be Tiger Woods. I'm never gonna be Phil Mickelson. I can't lie to myself about that. But you can become an elite producer. So don't lie to yourself about who you are and who you aren't. 
accept the fact that you don't have limitations. You need to look at what do you need to do to obtain your goals? What's your time frame and how far from it are you? How far from it are you? And then, my friends, you need to focus. You need to focus. You need to chart a plan. So let's talk about relentless determination for a minute. I'm going to tell you a story Billy Ray Cyrus told me. By the way, you couldn't meet a nicer, more humble guy than Billy Ray Cyrus. You know who he is, Old Town Road, Achy Breaky Heart. A year before Achy Breaky Heart, he told me he was living in his car. Living in his car. And he told me, I was beginning to think it would never happen for me. But he had relentless determination. Then, his achy breaky heart the biggest guy in the world, planet. Then he cools off. His daughter is an amazing superstar. And then he does Old Town Road. He's the biggest guy on the planet again. And deserves it. Great guy. You need to chart a plan. It's no longer about where you are. It's about where you're going to be. And isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? So I want to tell you a story. Uh, I just read the unauthorized autobiography of Phil Mickelson. Uh, I'm a big Phil Mickelson fan. Uh, I just love his personality, larger than life. And uh, by the way, if you get a chance to read that book, it's a great book. Uh, and I think the author is Alan Skolnick. I may not be pronouncing his last name right. Great book. It's just titled Phil. And one of the golfers he's talking with, I think it's a Ryder Cup story. They had just uh, bogeyed a hole. They'd lost a hole. They're all depressed. And Phil's an assistant coach or an executive coach or something. Wasn't, wasn't the head coach of the Ryder team. Or maybe he's just there, you know, it's on the team. And they come up to the next tee, and they're not happy. And Phil looks at him, and it's beautiful. It's the Ryder Cup. And Phil says to him, isn't this great? Now think about this. These guys are very unhappy. They've just lost a hole. They're in the Ryder Cup. They're representing America. And Phil Mickelson standing there going, isn't this great? But if you think about it, isn't it great? It really is. It's amazing. They're in the Ryder Cup, representing their country, doing what they love. Mindset. Mindset. That's why Phil Mickelson is the oldest champion to ever win a major. It's no longer about where you are. It's about where you're going to be. Rate your strengths, rate your weaknesses. I'll tell you time and time again, it's mindset. It's a plan. This, this should be, for so many of you watching this, so exciting. So exciting because now you should look at yourself and start to believe in yourself. I can become an elite producer. I can do this. Now, in order to become an elite producer, there's some things you have to master. And I'm going to go through them with you. The first is emotional appeal, building trust. In my opinion, the most important thing. And I'm going to give you in my recommended reading a book on that that's life-changing. It's used, 60 years old. And when you read it, it will change your life about how to build trust and emotional appeal. Scripting. Elite producers know what they're going to say and when they're going to say it. 
building a referral network. Referrals are the best source. They're more fun to work with. They buy quicker. You make more money from them. They're not a cold prospect. Yet so many people don't set up referral networks. And it's the easiest thing in the world to do. And one of the most important. Prospecting and marketing. Boy, you got to keep your pipeline full. You got to keep your pipeline full. And then closing. Got to know how to close. Dr. Dama Moy has a saying, open hard, close soft. If you set everything up, they you want them to want to do business with you. You want that. So these are the things you need to learn. And I know some of you are looking at this going, wow, Phil, this is, this is some work. Hey. Elite, elite producers put work into it. You're, you're not, look at some of the greatest superstars, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. These guys work so hard. Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson. The Rolling Stones, when they still tour, they get together and practice. Bruce Springsteen, and the E Street Band, they practice. It's work. You don't get to be a lead without working for it. You don't have to work 100 hours a week, but you have to put effort into it. And then, of course, you have to know your products and know your competitors' products. Know your products, know your competitors' products. Inside out. Inside out. Most people, oops, wrong way. There we go. Most people underestimate how much time and work go into success. I have to tell you, the rewards of being a lead producer, think about this, the things you were able to do for charities, for, uh, for your family, for your community, maybe your church, your synagogue, your mosque. And your clients and your prospects. Because elite producers always deliver value. It's so great. Elite producers have a confidence. and They feel great about themselves and they should in any field. Now, Here's six easy steps to break away, six easy steps to increase your income by six figures. Step number one, yes, this is a recording. Phil, you've said it a dozen times. Change your mindset. Step number two, set your goals and set the time, the speed, for your goals. Step number three, develop referral networks immediately. And uh, I've got a video on referral networks. Jay Abrahams has an amazing video and a program on referral networks. You want to develop many of these so that you have people referring whatever you do whatever you sell to you all the time, whether it's real estate, insurance, cars, copiers, mortgages, doesn't matter. Step number four, immediately harvest all prior clients and prospects. You know, car dealerships are finally figuring this out. Uh, many times today when you buy a car, They'll let you bring it in for a wash free anytime. Well, why would you do that? What do you do while they're washing your car? You walk in the showroom and see what's new. How many cars do you think they sell?
because people are trading in a perfectly good car because they're in there mesmerized by the brand new cars. I mean, let me tell you, how much fun is it, even if you're not buying a car, to walk into a showroom and see all these beautiful, new, amazing, gleaming cars? You have to harvest all your prior clients and prospects. Step number four. Step number five, increase your prospecting and marketing. So important. So important. Keep the pipeline full. And step number six is focus. Focus, focus, focus. I mean, many people, and they don't focus. They're like scattered. You can't become an elite producer without focus. So let me tell you a story here. I have a friend, and uh, he was selling life insurance. And he was very successful. And he would say, Phil, my friends complain because they'll call me during the week, and I won't answer their calls. And then they'll call me at night in the weekend, and they'll go, Randy. I called you, you didn't take the time out to talk to me. And he said, I asked him one thing, are you gonna buy insurance from me? I said, of course not. He says, then I'm not talking to you during working hours. I'm talking to you now, I love you, you're my friend. I'll talk to you at night, I'll talk to you early in the morning. But when I'm working, I'm working. Great story, true story. Focus, focus. Now, by the way, I like to tell you things that you can watch that I think will help you, will help your mindset. So I want to talk to you about one of my favorite TV shows, Million Dollar Listing, Los Angeles. It's on Bravo. It's been around several seasons. This guy's are great salespeople. And it's inspiring to watch them. It's inspiring. They know all about their products. They're competitive. They know their competitors. And they work together, too. And they work hard. So if you want to see an example of elite producers, that's an entertaining TV show to watch. Million Dollar Listing, Los Angeles. So now we're going to talk about the map to reach your goals. This is your map, your outline that you can look at that will help you. Where are you now in your career? So you got to look at where's the now? What are your goals? Got to have that. What's your speed? What's your time to achieve the goals? Do you want them? in a year, two years, three years. Gotta lay it out. What will you do weekly to achieve your goal? Will you work? Will you study? Here's a very important question for you. You need to be honest with yourself. Do you have a passion for this career? Whatever career you've chosen, do you have a passion for it? If you're in real estate, do you love real estate? If you're a retirement coach, do you love helping people plan for their retirement? If you're selling cars, do you love cars? Do you have a passion for this career? And you need to be honest with yourself, you have the work ethic necessary. Not everyone does. Not everyone does. But be honest with yourself. Here's what you have to master. We went through this a few minutes ago. Emotional appeal selling, building trust, scripting, building referral networks, marketing and prospecting, closing, your products, and of course, your competitors' products. And then you have to ask yourself, can I develop the self-discipline 
to focus. Here's a list of recommended reading. Now I have hundreds of books in my library. Uh, I've missed a few here that I really like, but I, I could give you a list that's three pages long. Let's start with important ones. And not that some of the ones I've admitted aren't important. Frank Betcher, uh, a contemporary of Dale Carnegie. How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling. These books are all available on Amazon. This is a great book. Took us a long time to figure out when he wrote it. It was 1951. Still relevant today. Uh, Frank was a pro baseball player, I think, in 1909. I, I'm trying to remember. This is just an amazing book. It will help you. From the marketing guru, Jay Abraham. Getting everything you can out of all you've got. Just love that book. Love that book. By the way, these are easy reads. Zig Ziglar, Secrets of Closing the Sale. The Master, Zig Ziglar. I read that book when it first came out. I think it was over 40 years ago, or around 40 years ago, 35 years ago. Made my biggest sale a couple of weeks later. Great book. From Tom Hopkins. How to Master the Art of Selling. Now, I view this book a little differently. I think it's like a college textbook. It is, it it's, requires concentration, but it's an amazing book, amazing. But you're not gonna zip through it. Now, the number one greatest salesman of all time in the insurance field was a guy named Ben Feldman. And Ben was a short, pudgy guy in a small town in Ohio and set every sales record in the world. He talked with a lisp. You would never look at him and think he was an elite producer. He wrote a book called Creative Selling for the 90s, and there was a book written about him called The Feldman Method. You can learn from Ben Feldman, folks. The guy was a genius. Of course, you have Joe Girard, How to Sell Anything to Anybody. Actually, how to sell anything to anyone. Sorry, Joe. And out of all the books, the most important, hardest to find, you're going to get a used copy on Amazon, The Magic Power of Emotional Appeal by Roy Garn. I don't even remember where I found out about this book. I think it was from somebody quoting Jay Abrahams about some something. And I looked it up, and then I looked for a copy. They're all used. I got a used copy in good shape, not cheap, 60, 80, 100 bucks. And then I devoured it. And I was up till two or three in the morning reading it, and I'm highlighting it. And I'm like, like, oh my, oh my God, this is just, it's just genius. It's just genius. That's an amazing book. It's a great book. Um, I wish someone would get the rights to reprint it and bring it out so everybody could share. It's, it's life changing. Now, for those of you who want to become an elite producer, if you're interested in talking to me, send me a text. Here's my number. Email me. There's an email to learn how to work with me in any field and become an elite producer or just to talk. Bounce ideas, ask help for something, I'm happy to do it. I want to thank you very much for watching. I'm really excited about your potential in becoming an elite producer. It's so much fun to talk and work with people who have these goals and to introduce them to other elite producers. It's amazing. So, God bless. Thanks for watching. Feel free to contact me at any time, any day. I appreciate it. That includes weekends, my friends. I'm Coach Phil, and I am out.